Okay, good morning, YouTube. Uh, today is May 3rd, uh, 22. I uh, just wanted to do a quick video on Yamaha YXZ fuel pumps. Um, I realize I, I help a lot of you guys with uh, turbo related questions and uh, obviously clutching our boost lock product. Um, the question that comes up often is uh, just, you know, fuel system for car that's making some good power or even just what do I do to upgrade a fuel system so I was just going to do a quick video on pumps specifically um, things we've used um, and the benefits and disadvantages of each one so my lineup here kind of have these lined up in order um, this very first one with the blue leads is your factory Yamaha fuel pump it came out of a factory Yamaha sending unit looks like this in your fuel tank um, there is a regulator built into this housing so you get a single line out to your fuel rail um, very simple um, pretty limited on the volume so depending on what you want to make for power and or what type of fuel you're using um, you know that's kind of where you start making some decisions on what do I change to um, notably this little tiny pump uh, let's see, this is probably 20 gauge wire. Uh, these things draw about five amps of power. So your factory sending unit and your factory wiring um, are rated for a roughly a five amp pump. Um, I think there's a 10 amp fuse in that circuit. You know, it's got a relay that's rated for probably, I would guess no more than 15 amps. I'm not sure what the factory relays are used for. Anyway, that becomes important, um, you know, when you think about jamming a bigger pump into one of these stock housings. The other thing worth noting is the size of these pins. Um, kind of hard to see in here, but your factory wiring through this factory sending unit, you know, it's, it's the same size pin. So, you, you know, you're talking maybe a 16 gauge pin. Um, everything is sized, you know, to reliably run this 5 amp pump here. Um, that all needs to be taken into consideration, you know, when you're going to a aftermarket or automotive style fuel pump that might be drawing, you know, upwards of 20 or 30 amps even, depending on what pump it is. Um, factory wiring and the factory bulkhead connector in the sending unit does not handle that current. So you stick a big pump in here and you run it, it might work a little bit, um, you're either going to burn up the wiring eventually, you're going to burn up the relay, obviously pop the fuse is probably the first thing that's going to happen. Um, but ultimately it's not going to provide enough current, you know, for that pump to do its job. So you might not get the fuel flow or the pump might not have the ability to make the pressure required, you know, at whatever power level you're trying to produce with your engine setup. So that's very important to note. Um, next pump we have in line here. This is going to be your Walbro 450 liter per hour size pump. Um, this is either a part number, I don't know, it's like super long part number, either ends in 265, which is uh, 450, or 285, which is uh, 525 liter per hour, um, which is actually what's in my hand. This one's taped up because, you know, it's been used, but there's a check valve in the end here on a, on a uh, 285 or a 295, which is the same pump, 525 liter per hour. Um, you can see that part number, 285. Um, 295 does not have a check valve. Um, and we'll get into that in a minute. <clears throat> so up next is our Deutschworks 400. Um, only rated at 400 liters per hour. This tinier Walboro over here is related at, you know, this particular one is rated at five and 525 liter per hour. You can see this Deutschworks is a lot bigger and it's rated for less volume. Um, believe it or not, this Deutschworks will outflow this Walbro um, in a high pressure situation. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Now this next one here is a, uh, it's made by Walbro. Um, this is what's called a BKS 1001. This is a brushless, uh, gear rotor style pump um, you can see it's smaller in diameter a little bit taller you know it's about the same diameter as this Walbro 
uh, about two and a half times the size of the uh, stock pump over here. Um, that's the big boy, in my opinion. Um, so the next important thing to talk about here is pressure, fuel pressure versus flow. There's a lot of information on this online. Um, mechanical design of a pump plays a big role in it and then obviously you know the motor that's driving that that pump assembly in there you know really starts to come into play your Yamaha side by side is going to have what we call a high pressure differential um, in a fuel system on a turbocharged setup on your Yamaha you're going to have a regulator um, to maintain pressure and that regulator is going to have a vacuum line or boost reference line connected to it that is going to raise that fuel pressure one psi for every pressure or every pound of boost pressure that goes into the intake manifold the reason you do that is you know you're you're basically maintaining equilibrium above the pressure in the manifold so if you're at 50 psi of pressure when the car is idling they, you know that would be considered 50 psi of base pressure when that car is now making 10 pounds of boost you know your total fuel pressure is going to be 60 psi and if you go to 20 pounds it'll be 70 psi if you're 30 you know you're 80 psi um, that's important to keep in mind because that's where these pumps really start to go in different directions um, Walbro is a great example like this pump here um, will flow you know 525 liters per hour so this thing is pumping just swimming pool uh, amounts of fuel out of it at zero pressure, okay? Um, as you get up into that pressure differential, so as this thing's encroaching, you know, 70, uh, even probably 60 plus PSI, that volume goes way down. It'll go down to like two, let's just say 230 um, liters per hour at roughly 70 pounds of base pressure. Uh, this Deutschworks, which is rated at less volume, um, will maintain better volume at a higher pressure so similar pressure uh, let's say 70 psi of fuel pressure you know you might be getting like 290 or 300 liters per hour out of this Deutschworks that's really important um, for your volume of fuel is what's going to actually produce the horsepower so and, and, uh, you know an injector sizing um, plays a role but with a 1700 cc injector you might be able to make uh you know you're gonna make more power with this thing because you're gonna have more maintained volume at that pressure than you would with this pump you know this pump's gonna run out of volume so you know the difference between the two is going to be how much duty cycle do i have in that injector under that amount of load you know you'll be you're going to be maxed out on this guy when you know you might still have some available duty cycle when you're have more uh, liters per hour available at that pressure um these three pumps are all a turbine style pump you know that's what yamaha uses that's what this Walboro is and this deutschworks is also a turbine i think you know this is just my opinion but i i feel the reason this deutschworks is able to maintain uh, more volume at that higher pressure is you know it's just physically larger i mean this thing has a larger electric motor inside of it than this Walbro. So this Walbro motor starts getting bogged down, you know, when you start creating that pressure. Deutschworks powers through it a little bit better. Um, all something to consider. I mean, I've used these Walbros a bunch. They work good. You know, that'll, that'll produce uh, 400 horsepower, no problem. Um, Deutschworks seems to be a little bit better. Uh, you know, this is kind of what we've been going to more um, for your DC style pump. You could probably, you know, you'll see, you could see 450 or 500 horsepower, you know, out of this Deutschworks, um, you know, with proper injector sizing on, on an ethanol car, your E85. Now, you know, when you're talking big power car, like 500 horsepower or more, which is, you know, kind of what we're working towards with our shop vehicle, um, you're, you're going to consider going to something like this uh, EKS 1001 pump. Now, this pump is about four times the cost of these other two pumps, but this thing will maintain about 500 liters per hour of fuel. You know, at a real high pressure, like 100 PSI, you're still getting 500 liters per hour of fuel. I couldn't imagine honestly needing any more than that. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna be testing this. We have put this in a customer's vehicle. It worked out really well. Uh, we're gonna do some of our own testing with it. 
Um, disadvantage to this BKS pump, obviously is cost, you know, being three to four times as expensive as some of these other ones. Um, the other disadvantage is, you know, it's more electrically complicated. There's four conductors on here, because this is a brushless motor. Um, then you have to have this huge box, you know, which I don't know if that gives you a perspective of the size. It's about mm, five inches wide and about three and a half inches tall. That's a brushless uh, driver. So, you know, you got your DC power in and then you have your leads coming out, which are actually gonna drive this motor. So you have to mount that somewhere. Um, advantage obviously is the volume at the pressure. Uh, another advantage is this is a PWM speed control, a bowl. So if you have uh, aftermarket engine management, you know, Mtron or Motec or something along those lines, you can set up a PWM output from your ECU to your uh, pump controller and you can modulate the speed of that pump. So, you know, when you're cruising, you're not using large fuel demand, you can turn the pump way down, which, you know, helps keep your fuel cool and doesn't use as much power from your electrical system, that kind of stuff. So there, there are advantages to it as well. Um, so all of that being said, you know, just some food for thought when you're picking a pump. Um, the next important thing that I can't stress enough, and this is what I typically talk to you guys on the phone about, is getting the right amount of power to this pump. So we'll exclude this brushless because it's its own thing, but this pump here and this pump here, this is DC 12 volts, you know, similar, same as your factory one here. Um, but, you know, this is a, uh, I think both of these are probably going to pull upwards of about 20 amps of current, um, you know, when they're making some pressure. So when you're in that higher pressure differential, um, 20 amps of current, you know, is way too much for your factory electrical system and just, it will not work. And I know there's some parts out there now that are being sold that plugs right in. It's got a bigger pump. Um, if you, it doesn't really work out. We'll just put it that way. You know, if, if you want it to work correctly, um, you have to do something to support the current. So, you know, typically what you would do is add a relay circuit from your battery to a relay, and then from the relay to the pump, and then you're going to take your factory positive and negative that were powering your stock pump, and you're going to use those to turn that relay on. Um, and that way you have a direct path of current from the battery to the pump, proper sized wire, you know, 12 gauge wire uh, with a fused circuit. So maybe a 20 amp fuse in there. Um, that's how it should be done correctly. Factory stator has enough power to run any of these, um, you know, aside from if you're running a bunch of lights and the stereo and everything else, but just stator power output strictly for running the engine, you know, you can run one of these pumps. Um, it works as long as you have, you know, have it wired correctly and you have enough current there to power the pump. So that's all I really wanted to say on that. Um, I do want to showcase, uh, I guess this is still a prototype product. I will have a finalized version of this uh, anodized and, you know, with our logo on it. It's all billet um, sending unit that we've been working on for these cars. You know, we can look at this. Here's your stock plastic one. This one doesn't have level sender clipped on it anymore. But this is going to be a product that we're offering within the next uh, few weeks, hopefully. Um, this is going to be our direct drop-in sending unit for the YXE. Now this has our own proprietary connector. This has 12 gauge pins um, for the pump circuit. So it gives you the you know, correct gauge of wire through the bulkhead to power these big pumps. And you know, billet aluminum gives you a um, AN outlet and an AN return. You know, you can do this in either a dash six or a dash eight, depending on what you guys are you know doing with it. Um, and we're making the pump hangers to support Walbro, Deutschworks, um, or pretty much anything in between, because this Walbro is a pretty standard uh, diameter. And that gives you, you know, here's an assembly um, billet top, obviously correct gauged electrical and then uh, you know the, the bracket for whatever pump um, you, you guys decide you want to run in your car um, should be in the 
near future uh, supporting wire harness for this thing. That's just one of those things we're still ironing out, which would be a, everything I spoke about just now with a relay, um, preferably like a plug and play. So, you know, you just have to run some wires to the battery and plug into it and then plug the other end into the sending unit and you're good to go. Um, but just wanted to show that to you, a little sneak peek. Um, this makes it really nice. You're not drilling holes in your factory plastic top to give yourself, you know, a proper outlet or a proper return. You're not drilling holes in the top to put threaded studs or, you know, some kind of provision for the uh, positive and negative leads to the pump to support the current. This just gives you something, you know, you spend a few minutes, put your Deutschworks pump in there or your Walbro or whatever you want to use. Uh, clip your factory sending unit to it and then drop it in the tank and you're on to the next step of you know, running your lines and building your fuel system. So wanted to show that off. Um, but hopefully I've covered a decent amount of information on fuel pumps specifically. Um, I'm just trying to get some information out there to answer some of these questions. So hope you enjoyed the video guys and uh, you know just look out on our website. I, I will do a uh, official release of this thing when I have the uh, anodized and engraved version of this ready to ship out. So I look forward to that and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.